mean, so far we have learned four sorting algorithms, um, which are insertion, merge, uh, quick sort, and counting sort. So, uh, and uh, the, the that so if you remember, uh, our, the title or uh, our, our course is named Data Structures Plus Algorithms. But so far, we only focus on this part because that uh, when we are when we are learning the the sorting algorithms, we basically focus on the procedures. We're not worrying about where are we going to store the data because the the data that we're going to store is pretty the uh, the container for us to store the data for us to store the data is, is quite simple. It is just arrays. So basically, um, so if we talk about uh, that structures and algorithms, we have to talk about them uh, as a combination because the the, uh, the operations that you're you're perf you're performing is over the the, the look uh, is over over the warehouse where you store the data. So so far, the combination we have learned is array plus sorting. Okay, uh, so that's pretty. That 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 structure over here is pretty simple. So we don't spend. Um, much time over it. So we just need to know uh, for our race that we, we will basically use index uh, to, to retrieve the values from it. And uh, so here, uh, a, a big limitation, uh, a big limitation about the array is that, so it's not very flexible. It's not, it's not dynamic at all. So for example, so initially if we create an array of size 10, this is a array, okay, if we, Say if we create an array of of a certain size, and for now let's say we want to add a new value. So let's say we give this array some some uh, values from zero to whatever. So here, if you want to add a new value, insert a new value into the array. Let's say we just want to add a ten at the end of it. We want to append a ten to the end of this array. So you have a new element to insert to the array, okay? So what kind of operations going to perform in order to be able to insert the new value? How can you insert a new value into an array? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, Suppose now you have an array of size 10, which, <clears throat> so these are the values in the array, okay? And now you have a new value, you want to insert it into the array. It's like you want to append a value to an array. How could you perform the operations to do that? Would it be array dot append, and then you put the value? Don't you have to create oh. a new array? Because like yeah, you can't. Yes, you, can, you, you, you will have to create a new array. So suppose here we got an array of size 10 over here, and you want to insert a new array, sorry, you want to insert a new element. What you need to do is that you need to create an array of size 11, okay? You are going to create a, an array of size 11 and copy and paste all the original elements to this new array and then uh, put the, the new element at the last position of the new array. So in Java, you can't append um, a new element to- No, you can't. Uh -huh. Okay. In, in any language, you can't. So once the array is created, its length is fixed. You can't do that in Python? I think Python, you can append it. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to say. In Python, if you are uh, doing list, okay, if you are doing list, oh, you, okay. can, you can append to a list, but that's not array. In Python, the array that we, we talk about is, is usually numpy dot array. Oh, okay. For for non-pi dot array, you so uh, basically you you can't you can't yeah. so so you have to create a new one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So um, so this is a, so here you can see that if we if we just want to insert a single element to the array, we have to uh, perform a lot of operations. So suppose here the original array. Let's be general. If the original array has n elements. How many operations do you need to perform in order to be able to insert a single element? Two. Two? More than that. How many operations? Uh, ten. Ten? Uh, yep, yep. So if, if n is ten, it's ten. 
right? I actually, it's 11, because you, you, you will need to perform one more operation. Okay? So you need to copy all the original. So basically, if the original array has n values, you need to copy all of them. For each of them, you need to do a copy and paste. That's n operations. Plus, you need to copy the new value. So in total, that is n plus one operations. Just to, for a single element, to insert or delete a single element, this is the number of operations that we have to perform. Okay, so suppose you have a you 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 have an array which includes one million elements, and to be able to cut to insert one one element to to that uh, to 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 that array, you have to copy and paste. You have to perform at least one million operations, and that's a lot. And let me give you an example. Okay, this is some something like so so far. Let's say assume that Montclair. Let's say Montclair has thirty thousand students, and this is like. If we want to admit a new student to Montclair, this is some, uh, so, so it, it's pretty much like we have to build a new, a whole university which, ha, which can allocate uh, th uh, 30,000 plus one students. And then let all the students from, from our, uh, go move from our current campus to the new campus. And then invite the new student to the new campus. Pretty much like that, right? Do you get what, what do you get what I say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is a, a major limitation of of uh, array because the the here uh, if we create an, an array, we always use up all deep spaces. There is no buffer space. So if we create an, a, uh, an array uh, whose size is ten, we always use all of them with no buffer space for new elements. So. So in that case, if we want to perform an insertion, it's going to take, we have to do a lot of, of, of operations. And if we, if, we, if we say the insertion and means for, for us to, to be able to, insert, to do insertion or deletion over an array, over an array the, the, the complexity is going to be ON. So because we have to copy and paste all the original elements to the new place. We need to create a new uh, a, a, a new space and copy and paste all the original elements to it. So if if originally we have n elements, the the complexity is going to be O n, right? Yeah. And, okay. And this is this complexity is is too much. So um. So this is or if if I give you an example, suppose, uh, say um. Uh, let's say when you are, let's say ten, ten years from now, uh, uh, you might be married, okay, and then you want to buy a, a house, okay. Say you you are discussing the uh, where to buy a house with your with your spouse, and then so so since you are only one couple, and so some so some spouse may say, okay, let's just go go for one bedroom, one bedroom, okay, let's just one for go to one uh, go. For, shop for one bedroom and one bathroom uh say say apartments uh and so so but the problem is that if you give birth to a new baby you have to sell that apartment and buy a two bedroom plus one bathroom apartment right yeah. so okay so this is this is pretty much like the array operation okay so um so uh let's say originally if you at the current time, if you only need some a certain amount of space, you just create that that space with no buffer, okay. And next time, if you want to allocate more space, if you are asking for more space, you have to create a, one with with a larger space and move and move over there, okay. So this is pretty much like a array. But here we want something else. So so more so 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 because because it's going to take a long while for you to sell and buy. And also to move. So some couple may say, okay, let's 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 allocate some buffer for our, for our future. What if we are going to get a baby next year or 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 two in two years? Let's just go for two bedroom, one bathroom apartment, so that we have one bedroom as a buffer as the buffer space. And if we got a a, a new life in our uh, if we got a a new life, then we have we have the space for 
for that uh, for the for the baby. Okay, so do you think which one is smarter? The second. Like, yes, we we definitely yeah, we definitely want to go for the second one with some buffer space, unlike arrays. Okay, and because in that case. In that case, the, for us to, to be able to, to uh, insert or delete an element, the complexity is going to be O1. Here, the complexity is O1. O -N. So, so O1 comes from the fact that if, if your house has, let's say, 10 people, all the 10 people have to move to the new apartment. So, but here, if you, you've got a buffer space, if you've got a one bedroom, Allocated as the buffer space, we just need to put the new baby in that in that room. So that is going to be one for one complexity. Okay, so so um, in this week we are going to learn three data structures that have they are pretty much like arrays, but they uh, the, the the biggest difference is that they have buffer space, which are uh, stack, queue, and the linked list. So they are like uh, storage or, or storage places or, or say that containers or data structures with, uh, with buffer space. And so today we're going to learn the first two, stack and queue. They're pretty similar. So uh, this is our outline today. And so stack and queues are, are dynamic uh, data structures that support efficient insertion and deletion for both of these data structures. The insertion and deletion complexity is O is O one. Say if you only have one element to insert, you just put it in in, in the in the buffer space. If you want to remove one element from from either stack or queue, you just take it out, and we got one more buffer space. So uh, this is what we uh, so so that's why uh, we are able to get O one uh, insertion and deletion complexity from these two data structures. And actually, these two data structures are just Arrays. They are just arrays with buffer space. Okay, so you are going to say it very soon. And but uh, so so far we are just talking about they're pretty similar. They they both offer uh, O1 complexity in terms of insertion and deletion, and also they uh, say uh, they are uh, they they are arrays with buffer. But still, there there is some difference. There are some difference between these two data structures. So the difference is like this. Stack, uh, the difference between stack and queue is like this. So I'm, I want to explain it in, uh, you know, uh, using a real life example. Suppose today you just go to a wholesale club, let's say Costco or BJ's. And so you want to buy some packs of, of waters. Okay, so no, you work at a, 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 a wholesale club and you, your task is to move the, uh, a lot of packs of waters on the, on the shelves for customer to shop. Okay, so here, uh, so suppose this is the shelf, and currently it is empty, so you, you just get your first pack, pack of water and put it over here, okay? And then here, next time you got a new pack of water. So, so where are you going, so, you, so now you get a second pack of water to put on the shelf. So where are you going to put, put it? I will give you two options. The first option is to put it over here, Okay, to put it on top of the original one. The second option is that, okay, you remove this one first, you remove this one first, and then you put, you put the, the new one at the, uh, at the bottom and then uh, put, the, uh, put the, the older one on top of it. So which, which way are we going to go for? Just put it on top. Yes, just go, just go for the left one, okay? Just put it on top. You are not going to remove all the old, uh, so so all the old old packs, and then uh, so so uh, from the shelf and put the new pack at the bottom. No, you're just so the way for you to 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 insert new packs is to keep putting them on top of the original ones, on top of the original ones. Okay, so suppose now let's say this is how you uh, how you add new pack of waters, and then suppose now you are not a a a, a a, a worker at at the, the wholesale club. Instead, you are a customer, and you want to buy some waters. And then here you just enter the uh, the the store, and you you find okay, 
the shelf now the shelf has four pack of water four packs of waters assuming that they are pretty they're all of the same quality which one are you going to 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 buy you're gonna buy the one at the top morris yes you want to remove the one at the top okay so i i don't think anyone is going to say get rid of this first three move this first three and then get to the bottom one no, no one is going to do that because it, 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 it is going to take more efforts. So this is pretty much like stack. We, what we do is that stack implements the last in first out policy, meaning that the water pack that goes to the uh, shelf in the last place is going to be removed first. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, again. Okay. The, the water pack that goes to the shelf last because the top one goes to the goes to the uh, store sorry go, goes to the shelf in the last place it is going to be claimed by the customer first okay so uh, this is the how how stack manages the objects so it is support it supports uh, the the last in first out policy whereas uh, queue is pretty much like the uh, the waiting list uh, let's say today if you say you want to go to see your see your doctor. Your doc, uh, you want to see your doctor, and then this is the the waiting room in your doctor's space. So let's say student A comes to see the doctor first, then student B and student C. Okay, who is who is able to see the doctor first? A, I suppose. Yes, A is going to see the doctor first because A enters the waiting room first, right? And then following that is B and it's C. So, so this is Q, okay? Q implements a first in, first out policy because the person whoever comes to, to the Q first is going to be able to leave first or to go to, uh, is, is, is able to go to see the doctor first. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so, so you just, so to understand the difference between stack and Q, just need to take stack as the shelves how does the shelf work and then uh, take a queue as the the waiting room or, or waiting list oh so this is for Not uh, then I'm from the uh, the real part. So as as I as I as I said before, uh, so with buffer space. So how do we know where is the buffer space? And so uh, so for stack, in order for us to know the buffer space. So again, uh, stack is basically an array. So as you can see over here, can you see my screen with the the, the stack? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. So uh, the the stack. So so let's say originally we created a, a stack with with like buying a house with seven rooms. But so far only four people are in your house. So uh, so then you, you allocate four rooms for for them. So and here you put, you use a variable called the top okay, and of the rooms that have been occupied. Okay. And then starting from the top. Start, starting from the top, everything is left as the buffer space. Okay, so so uh, so basically, top is the index of the last element in the uh, in the in this in the stack or in the array. Okay, so so stack is basically an array with an additional element called with an additional attribute called top, which points which is the index of the last element. Okay, suppose now there is a new value. Let's say we want to put a new, insert a new value into, into the stack. Where are you going to put it? Um, in index five? Yes, at index five. Great, so this is the first buffer space that we, uh, we can use, okay? So, uh, so, and then let me ask a different question. Okay, what if, say we want to remove an element from the, the stack, which one are we going to remove? Element five. Number five. No, just just look at here. Okay, just look, so suppose here we our our stack has four elements. Oh, four. Okay. okay. 
Okay, pointed by four. Okay, so we're going to, if we want to remove something, it's going to be nine. This is because you can take this stack as this way, as the, the shelf. So the pack 15 comes first, with ID 15 comes first, then six, and then two, and then nine, okay? So remember that we implement the stack implements the last in first out policy. So the the number that comes to the comes into the this stack at the last place, which is nine, is going to, to get out of the stack first. So if we want to remove an element, it's going to be this value, nine, right? Yeah, it'd be last. Okay. Okay, to summarize the, the, the insertion and deletion operations, for stack, if we, want, if we want to insert a new element, we will need to put the new element one position after, after top, and then increase top by one, because now we have one more element. Whereas to, to delete an element, what we need to do is that we need to remove the element at the place of top, and then delete top by one, because one element is gone, right? Yep. Okay, so with that being said, okay, this is the uh, the uh, uh, these are the operations. So first, let's let's look at uh, the the how to implement the empty function for stack. This function basically help helps us to check if a stack is empty or not, meaning that if it it, it does have any element in it or not. So, uh, for example, if if we have a stack that is empty, so if we have a stack that is empty, where should we put top? Where is top? Remember, top points to the top is the index of the last element. So if, if we got a, a stack that is empty, where what is the value of top? Would just be one. If so, if top is one. It, it means that it indicates that we have one element in the, in the stack, which is at the first place, right? Right? Because remember, top is the index of the last element. So if you put top over here, it means that the last element is over here. So then would it be zero? Yes, correct. So we need to, we need to set top as zero if if the uh or if the, the, the stack does not have any element, all the all the rooms are, are empty. So it's, it's it's basically telling people that no room is has been used in this in this house. Okay. So um oh so so then if you understand it, then uh if you understand this, then in order for us to check if a stack is empty or not, we just need to compare uh, the uh, top with zero. If it, it, if it is zero, we return true, meaning that the, uh, the stack is, is, is truly empty. Otherwise, we just return false. Simple? Yeah, let's just check. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. So next, let's move on to uh, the other two functions. The this function called push is basically doing insertion to a stack, okay? It takes two it takes two parameters. S is the is the stack, and X is the new element that we want to put in. Uh, so remember, uh, we here we, we previ previously we said that if we have an, a new element to insert into a stack, we we are going to put it as top at the index of top plus one, right? So what we do here is that. So the operations that we do is that first we're going to increase top by one, and then we assign the new element to, to the corresponding place of the, of the array. So here is the example. So suppose here we got an X, which is, which is 17, meaning that we want to insert 17 into the, into the, uh, into the stack. Then, so following the pseudocode, what we do is that first we're going, to, so, so far we have top as four, so first we're going to increase top by one. So top becomes five, this is top. And then we're going to assign the new value 17 to the place, to this place. Make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Okay, cool. So actually, uh, <clears throat> when, this week your, your task is going to be 
uh, I mean, to understand these three data structures, uh, your task is going to be relatively easy because uh, these are the most basic data structures other than uh, arrays. So, so all the operations are pretty are pretty easy for us to 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 uh, to understand. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is good news for you because you don't have to spend that much time, that long time on your homework. So, is there anyone who have already finished homework three? A quick sword and a counting sword. Yeah, almost. Okay, almost done. Cool. How many hours do you spend on it? Okay, three, yeah, cool, three to four, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, like four. So if you, I mean, for this homework, for, for uh, this work's homework, I, I would say it's probably going to take a, a half of it, let's say around 1.5 to two hours for you, okay? I see someone is working on a hip sword, and that's wonderful. Uh, uh, so, but if you need help with regard to hip sword, just just send me an email, okay? So. Uh, uh, so I can help you to, to debug your code. I'm sure that you will, you will face a lot of challenge, challenges when doing uh, the heap sort. Cool. So, uh, okay. And uh, uh, so, so here, uh, if, if we understand the, the, the logic of, of uh, uh, the insertion function for, for stack, I say, how many operations do we perform over here? In order to push elements or insert elements to the array, sorry, to, to the to the stack, how many oper operation operations did we perform? Two. Two. Only two operations. So this means that no matter how long, how many elements are there in the stack, if if the stack only has one element, you're going to perform two operations. If if the stack has one million elements, we also need to only perform two operations. Right. If we want to draw the time performance, here n is the size of the array or the number of elements in the array, and here is the the time for us to insert an element into the array. What kind of of, of shape do we expect this this figure to be? Isn't it constant? So it's uh... yes, it's a constant. It's going to be a flat line, it's... right? Yeah. No matter how large is the array, the time for us to insert an element. Uh, sorry, no matter how large is the 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 the, the stack. Uh, so so the time performance or the number of instructions in, uh, for us to insert an, an element remains unchanged or remains constant. It's always two. So the time performance would be something like a flat line. It is totally irrelevant to the size, to the size of the stack. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. So if we if we if we want to write down this kind of like time complexity in the big old format, so what so what do you think should we fill in in this bracket over here? We do O one. Yes, go O one. Yes, big O one. O one meaning that the the time performance is going to remain, uh, say, constant and is totally irrelevant to the size of the input. So it's not anything like O n or O n log n. No, it's just O one. It remains constant. But it's how do you irrelevant. know what size should your array be? Like, wouldn't that matter for if you need to manage your data, like how much space you have? Sorry. Like how how big do you know to set the array to be? Um, okay, so your question is that how, uh, so because of, of, obviously here we say that the the, the array that stores the the values in the stack size now in this in this example it is seven, mm -hmm. but in practice how large should we set it? Yeah. So I guess this is your question. Okay, and actually this is um, let's say for example uh, Java supports that that structure stack java has stack implemented by already so if you just google it uh, let's say um, here so we, you should be able to see this api so java already implemented this for you okay and so your question is that so so and 
here you can see that Java uh, supports the push and the pop function. Push, the uh, push is basically for us to insert element, uh, element into the array, uh, in, into the into the stack. So your, so the question is that how large is the stack? So it depends on the uh, in, in implementation. Uh, actually, most most uh, uh, say program languages already uh, implement this this uh, uh, this basic data structure called stack. And the, the initial size of the varies. So I think for Java, the, the default size is 128. So uh, if you create a, if you create a new stack, and by default it is its size is is this large. C, for C plus plus, I'm not sure, but it should be similar. So the thing is is that if you use up all the current spaces, all the current spaces, all the 128 spaces, it will allocate, it will create a new stack whose space doubles the previous one, let's say 256, and copy and paste all the original values over here. And then if you use up all the 256 spaces, it will again double it. Oh, it does it automatically? Yes, it, it, it uh -huh. does it automatically. Okay, all right, thank you. No problem. So uh, in this way, because when you create a new stack, Java has no way to, to infer, okay, how large do you want this, how, how, many, how many elements are you going to insert into it? So it just, so, so like, let's say one way is that it creates a stack with one million spaces, but it's going to consume a lot of your memory. So to, in order to, to save your memory, it, it does this way automatically. And unless, and also Java supports a way for, to, to, to specify how large, when you create the, st the stack, you can specify how large do you want it to be? It is optional. You can pass in a parameter called n, saying that okay, I want so I want to create a, a stack at this large. Okay, so but if you don't specify it by default, it's, it is one twenty eight. That clear? If you specify it, does it still double or it just stays? Yes, every time. So if you use up all the original spaces, it's going to double it. Gotcha. Okay, so <clears throat> okay, so uh, next, uh, let's look at the deletion function of stack. Basically, the pop the pop function does the delete job. Okay, so so in this over here, we say that if we want to remove element from the stack, which one are we going to remove? So that would remove the first index. No. No, because we say index. that the stack implements the Nine. last in first out policy, right? Gotcha. So which one are we going to take out? The last index. Yes, the top. which is the top, pointed by top. Cool. So here, if we say uh, this is the, the pop function for, for stack. So for, before, we, before we really remove something, we need to check if the stack is empty or not. If it's empty, we're going to send out an error message saying that, uh, so, so you are basically uh, removing elements from a, a empty stack, and this is not going to be successful, okay? Otherwise, if it's not empty, what we do is that, let's look at this, this is really interesting. What it, it does is that it will first decrease top by one. So in this example, what it does is that it will decrease this top by one. So the new top is going to be here at, at five. Okay, we got top, we, we, we decrease top by one. So top points to five, and then it will return as top plus one. So as top, so top plus one is basically six. So it will return the sixth element in the stack, which is three, it will return three. It basically returns the element that has been removed, okay? But the thing is, is this, do we actually remove this element, physically remove this element from the stack? You just remove what's uh, inside of the element? No, we don't, re we, here is the result after we perform this operation. First, we decrease top by one, and then we, we, remove, or we, we return the element that has been removed. But the thing is that that element still exists in the stack. Okay, so this is really smart because there is no need for us to physically remove it. 
after we after we the purpose for us to remove that element is the effect for us to remove that element is basically next time when we want to insert a new element into the array uh, into the stack say we want to insert 18 to the to the stack we want to put stack over here right correct yeah and here by actually decreasing top by by one it gives gives you an illusion saying that this room has nobody in it and next time when 18 comes you just put it use 18 to overwrite overwrite the the previous value right right so we don't physically remove it we just it's kind of like we just ignore it So Makes sense? What, were, what were to happen if you were to call six and if it's it, like popped? So what do you mean? Like S6. If you S6? Were to like, yeah. Okay. Here, because because we are, because we have, we have top S5 so, for now. So you are not going to call S6. Because it's basically, it's, it's, it's telling, telling you that. Uh, so we, so far, there are only five values in the stack. So then in that case, you should not go to visit S6. Okay. Okay. And actually, uh, this can, so, so, if, so this philosophy, meaning that by, if we want to remove an element from, uh, if we, we want to remove something, we don't, we don't physically remove it. We basically just ignore it. So next time, if we want to use that space, we are going to overwrite it. Okay, and this is uh, this philosophy is widely used in computer science. And one famous example is your hard drive. Okay, suppose that here this is your hard drive in un under a certain folder. You have file A, file B, file three, and file four. Okay, you got four files, and so one day you say that I want to remove this file. Mm -hmm. Does it really? Does it really remove the file from your hard drive? If you go to your file system and if you go to your your your, your computer and and click remove or delete that file, is that file really removed? Kind of, not really. <laughs> no, no. What it does is that it breaks this link. So from the directory, from if you visit that directory. You will not be able to see that file, but that file still resides on your hard drive. But the thing is that next time, if you want to, you if you if you want to say say create a new file, it's able to re recycle the space that that this deleted file uh, originally occupied and overwrite it. Do you know what what does this implement? Uh, either uh there so so if you understand this then there is a a, a big thing that you need to worry about when you want to discard a computer say that for for now let's say you have a laptop and and which is really old you want to get rid of it and but on a hard drive there may it may it may include some very sensitive information about it about you or, or about your family. Let's say for example, it includes some of your photos, some of your passwords. Okay, so yes, those information are really sensitive. So you don't want to uh, disclose it to you don't want 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 anyone else to know it. So before you throw that laptop away, some of you may go to the, your, your, your computer and, and say, I want to delete those sensitive files, delete those sensitive files, or some, someone else, uh, else may go to reformat it. You, form, you format your hard drive again, right? So do they, does actually, none of these two operations help you to protect your, your privacy because by either by deleting or re reformatting uh, the, the hard drive, the files, the contents still reside on your hard drive. It's just that the, the file system just ignores those parts, just assumes that there is nothing on it, but actually the content is never erased from your hard drive. And if you, if you just discard your, your hard drive and someone uh, discard your, your computer and someone collects the hard drive, it's very easy for that person to recover the original files 
on your uh, on your hard drive. So to before you throw away a computer, do you know what you should do in order to protect your sensitive information? Back it up. No, back it up is, is basically to, to provide a copy of it. You don't want to lose, lose it. But here, what we're worrying about is that you don't want to disclose this information to anyone else. You want to destroy that information. Pop it or not? Pop it? No. Pop it basically is like delete the files or format the hard drive. Uh, if you overwrite it, I guess. Yes, cool. So what do you do is like, like this. So suppose here, three is the sensitive file that we just, we just disclose. After we, uh, we, 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 sorry, three is the sensitive file that we want to remove. After, click, after clicking um, remove on this file, what it does is that it just ignore this file, but the file still exists on. So in order to protect your stuff, you need to overwrite it. Next time, if you just write, if you say, okay, I want to insert a new element into the, the stack, let's say 18. You put 18 over here, you put 18, uh, so you can put over 18 over here. So the original content three is overrated. It's gone. For tablet drive, which includes some of your very sensitive, sensitive information. In first, you need to delete the original files. And it just found some video public onto the so that the original overrated. Makes sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So, <coughs> so this is how to protect yourself. And then, um, uh, so, so here, talk about so, so far, we just think about X. So in stacks, we learn uh, three functions, which are uh, uh, the empty, push, and, and pop. So all of them have O1 complexity. How many are there in a stack? For, for example, here for us to check if the stack is empty or not, we just need to perform one operation by checking if the top is zero or not. For us to, to add a new element into the stack, two operations. So for us to pop a new element, for us to remove an element from the, uh, from the stack, Three operations. So, uh, so in total. So, so here we can we we, we can uh, conclude that all these uh, say say uh, operations are, are of O1 complexity, meaning that no matter how many elements are there in the stack, the num uh, the amount of time that we need to span is just constant. Okay. So uh, this is stack. Any question? No questions. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So next, let's let's uh, talk about queues. So uh, remember, queue is pretty much like the waiting list. Whoever comes to the to the to the queue first is is able to leave first. Okay, first in, first out. And so, in order for us to uh, to to say 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 uh, remember who comes first and who comes last, we need we need the two attributes, two additional attributes, or two additional variables. Uh, which are, are head and tail. Head basically is the index of the first element in the, in the queue. So, so here in, among the remaining values of the queue, 15 is the first one that enters the, the queue. So we have, uh, we, we have head uh, as, as we have head as seven, uh, which is the index of, of 15. And tail basically points to, to the index of the next location where the new element needs to be inserted. So basically, if we got a new element to come into the, the queue, we are going to put it at tail. Okay, so, so stack has one additional uh, variable that is, uh, that is called top, but, uh, but queue has two additional uh, variables, which are head and tail. So, um, okay. And then let's look at the insertion function for for uh, for Q. So uh, so here, uh, how uh, the the the, insert, the insertion function for Q is named in Q. So it takes two parameters, two input parameters, Q, which is the uh, which is the Q, and 
x is the element to be inserted. So as, as what we discussed previously, so for example, over here we are, so because tail points to the next available position. So we're going to assign the new element over here. So here, suppose we, we want to insert x as 17. So we're, then we're, so with this operation, we're going to assign 17 to this place. And the next question is that, okay, what after we insert tail at this place, what is the next, next available place for a new element or a new patient to sit? Okay, if we just allocate this space for 17, so then if, so where should another new element uh, sit? Six. No, so let me, let's, let's, let me put it, put it in, in this way, okay, suppose, this is a doctor's waiting room. So these are uh, a couple, five chairs. And originally we got, uh, say, one, two, three, four, four patients come in, okay? Four patients are here. So then, uh, so first, uh, patient one is, is able to see the doctor and patient, patient two is able to see the doctor. So then we got patient three and patient four over here. And then patient five came in. So we left patient five sit after patient four, right? Okay, so the thing is that if we got patient six coming, where should we let patient six sit? Should we keep, uh, should we keep the, the patient six with outside or should we reduce some of the chairs that are left empty? Use some of the chairs that are empty? Yes, so we, we are going to let patient six sit over here, but the thing is that the uh, if you are if you are the you, if you work at the front desk of the patient office, you you, you will need to uh, make some notes saying that here is the head, meaning that this is the first ad, uh, patient, and this is the tail, meaning that if if another new patient comes in, we should let that, that patient sit at this chair. So basically, we re, we recycle the the chairs that are left empty by those patients who already see the doctor, okay? We, we use it in a circular way. So same here, okay? Since that the last space has been used, uh, occupied by the new element uh, 17, so we are going to set tail as one, so that when a new element comes in, it's going to uh, sit over here. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So then this is the uh, this is pretty much the the, the pseudo code for for inq. So first we just assign the new element to the to the uh, index that is pointed by tail, and then if tail is already if tail is equals to the length of the of the of the array, basically it's this case, then we are going to set tail as one. It's like we are going to uh, reduce the, the queue and uh, we're going to re reduce the previous space in a circular way. Otherwise, we just increase Q by one. So for example, here, uh, after, so here we just add a, a insert an, another element, let's say three. And then we, we insert, uh, we, we add a Q. So after we, we, we insert a new element three, we are basically going to move Q one position to the right by increasing it to uh, by, by one. So then, if we got a new element to come in, so it's going to sit over here. So this, uh, by doing this, we are able to, to uh, reduce the spaces in a circular way. Okay, uh, any question? So you want tail to always have no value in the index? Right. It's, it's, okay. Right, basically uh, here, you can say that tail is the index of the, of the next available position. So okay, tail, the, the place pointed by the tail must be empty. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so how many operations did we perform in the, do we perform in the inq function? Four. Uh, actually three, because 
this is if and else, we're going to either execute this line or this line. So, so basically we are, it's like, we got one, uh, we got one operation over here and one operation over here and one either one uh, over here or one over here. So in total, there are just three operations. No matter how many elements are there in their array, so in total there are only three operations. And so, so, so here we can say that the complexity of the intro function is also O1, right? Yeah. Okay. So next, let's move on to the DQ function, which is which helps us to delete an element from the queue. So, so tell me, what kind of uh, policy does does Q implement? Do you have a term for it? Out. Yes, first in, first out. Whoever comes, so because here head points to the element, head is the index of the first element. So if we want to remove an element from the queue, which one are we going to remove? The head. Yes, head. the head. So here, when we call the head, uh, when we call the DQ function, we're going to remove 15. So first it stores the value that we want to remove in X. So here we have X as 15. And finally, it, it, it is going to return X. It will tell you, okay, which element has been removed from the queue. And next, I say if the queue length equals to, so, so after we re remove that, after this element is kind of like gone, we need to increase, we, we need to move head one position to the right. So head becomes eight, right? So, so, uh, so this is what we do over here. But we will only do that. But if we reach a situation like here, let's say all the elements are gone and currently the head is here, head is here, and we just remove this element from the from the queue. So so then which one is the the head? Would it be one? Yes. We are going to move head over here because if you remember over here so with we after uh, after inserting uh inserting 17 three we, we insert three and then five right so if 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 all these elements are gone then the the first element in the array should be or in the queue should be three so that's why we we are going to set head as one over here okay so that's why we got this if and else statement. If head equals to, uh, to the length of the, of the array, we, we set head as, as one because we're going to reuse the spaces in a, in a, a circular way. Otherwise, we, we simply add one to, to head. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. Okay, so again, let's say how many operations do we perform over here? one one either one of the the and then finally we return so in total there are only four operations which means that the, the complexity of the dq function is also o1 so it's it's constant it's irrelevant to the size of the of the queue right mm -hmm. okay so any question with the inq and dq function for q No, thank you. No, okay, cool. So, and here we can see that the complexity of these two operations of the insertion and deletion oper uh, operations for Q are also O1. Okay, so yes, and uh, yes, and and for so, so you are going to learn the, uh, the application of Q in, uh, in your operating system class 345. Because it is used by uh, it is by, uh, so so we, we basically use Q for CPU scheduling algorithms as one of the uh, possible CPU scheduling alg algorithms. That's when you are going to apply Q. I, I think that in your operating system class, your instructor is going to ask you to implement this scheduling algorithm, and at, in that case, you will need to implement the, you will need to use your Q. Okay, so uh, okay, so this is the application of Q. And then, yes, that's pretty much what we discussed today. And we uh, learned stack and queue. 
So uh, basically, we say that they are just arrays with buffer space, and but they are they, they operate in different ways. The stack provides the last in and first come policy, whereas uh, queue implements the, the first in first come policy. So you can take take stack as a the the, the shelves in a in a in a uh, in a supermarket, whereas the, you can take uh, queue as the, the waiting list. So yes, uh, today we have a relatively lightweight lecture, and actually this is this is uh, what, what what we are going to have in this whole week. So okay, so uh, question time. What will the homework be like? Uh, I know that you said it's it's um, with this information, but like, uh, what are we gonna have to do? Okay, so in your homework, you are going to Im implement these three functions uh, of stack. So the, the insertion, deletion, and empty functions of stack, and also you are going to implement the in queue and dq function for queue. So I help you to build the define the classes already, and you are it's pretty much like what you did in, in the in the sorting algorithms. Uh, next class, I'm going to show you the, the scaling code that I provide to you. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, professor, didn't you say something about a third uh, function? Oh, like so stack that's stack queue and another. That is link the list. We are going to leave it link. for Friday. Okay, understood. Okay. So, any other question? So, if no, then that's that's what that's it for for today. Okay. Have a good day then, Professor. Okay, too. Okay, thank you, Professor. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day.